we shall see the role of electronics in automotive system. So let me quickly walk you through the list of topics that will be covered in this webinar. Then we will try to understand the application areas where electronics can enhance the driving experience of a car. As we are going to learn about electronics in car, it is important for us to understand the type of messages that we have to process. For this, we will quickly take a look at typical messages from ECU. One of the important applications of electronics in car is safety systems. The next topic in our webinar will be safety systems. There are two types of safety systems, passive and active. We will see this in detail in the upcoming slides. Under passive safety system, we will check airbags and how it helps in saving life when accidents happen. Under active safety system, we will check anti-lock braking system, traction control system, and electronic stability program. Out of these topics, we will see anti-lock braking system in detail. After covering these topics, we will quickly check infotainment and navigation system, instrument clusters, body control module, and in-vehicle communication system. We will end this webinar by looking at the possible career path, job opportunities, and skill sets required to establish a career in this industry. I request all of you to kindly share your questions to the coordinator. The last 15 minutes of today's webinar is devoted exclusively for questions and answers. So friends, without any further ado, let's dive deep into our webinar with the first slide, Evolution of Electronics in Car. Before I get into this graph and explain what it means, I'm sure every participant is curious to know why should we even bother to learn about automotive electronics? Why automotive electronics is a topic of discussion today? So electronics in car, as you know, is increasing year by year. Gone are the days when automobiles were seen as mechanical machines. The drawbacks of mechanical systems like limited accuracy caused by undetected failures posed life threats to consumers. Soon safety of consumers was seen as the need of the hour. As the popular saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention, and this led to electrification of cars. I hope it is clear why there is a need to learn about automotive electronics. So with that, let's move on to this graph. So as you can see in the X axis, you have the years starting from 1976 till 2020. And of course, it is also projected till 2030. In the Y axis, you can see the cost of electronics in terms of percentage of total cost of the car. Okay. And as you can see in this slide, the cost of electronics as a percentage of total cost of car worldwide from 1970 to 2030 is gradually but steadily increasing. By 2030, it is predicted that 50% of the total cost of automobile will be due to electronics in it. Okay, so now let's move to the next slide. Let us quickly take a look at the list of application areas where electronics can be applied. The first one is body electronics, uh, which includes automotive lighting, car access and security systems, mirrors, body motors, power seats, and body sensors like obstacle detection sensor and vehicle occupant detection sensor. All this comes under body electronics. Before we proceed further, I want to share one more point. Uh, in the slides, you'll see only few points. I'll be explaining each point uh, when I'm taking the session. You'll not find every word in the slide, okay? Just the hints in the slide. So we'll move on. The other application areas of electronics include uh, driver information system, powertrain vehicle dynamics, vehicle network systems or in-vehicle communication system, sensors and actuators in car, infotainment system, navigation and connection system, connectivity system. Okay, so here the next slide is a fun fact. This is a very important fact. In 1968, Volkswagen introduced the first consumer vehicle available with a computer. It was a transistorized electronically controlled fuel injection system. The first production of automotive microcomputer ECU was a single function controller used for electronic spark timing in the 1977 for General Motors Oldsmobile Tornado. For those of you who are thinking, what is Oldsmobile Tornado? It is a personal luxury car manufactured and marketed by Oldsmobile division of General Motors from 1966 to 1992. 
over four generations. In 1978, General Motor offered as an option its Cadillac trip computer on the Cadillac Seville. For those of you who don't know what is Cadillac Seville, it's also a car which was introduced in 1975 by General Motors. The computer, a modified Motorola 6802 microprocessor chip, displayed speed, fuel, uh, trip, and engine information. So that's about this slide. So we'll move on to the next slide where we try to understand the typical messages that are given to ECU from various sensors in car. ECU stands, stands for Electronic Control Unit. The typical messages that, are, that is processed by ECU includes engine torque, accelerator position, engine speed, throttle position, engine request, engine status, vehicle speed, and odometer, air conditioning, and finally, OBD data. OBD data stands for onboard diagnostics data. Before moving on to the next slide, I want to share what are the different types of sensors, a brief overview about different types of sensors in car. So a modern day car includes following sensors, mass air flow sensor, engine speed sensor, oxygen sensor, spark knock sensor, coolant sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, fuel temperature sensor, voltage sensor, camshaft position sensor, throttle position sensor, and vehicle speed sensor. I'll just explain two or three of these sensors so that you get a feel of why we need sensors in car. So starting with mass air flow sensor, it is used to measure the air density to calculate the amount of fuel that is required to burn. Next is spark knocks sensor, which is used to ensure fuel is burned smoothly. Manifold absolute pressure sensor, which monitors the load of an engine. So that's about sensors. And as we are going to talk about automotive electronics, we can't skip embedded system. And for you to integrate all these sensors to a controller, your ECU electronic control unit is nothing but a microcontroller inside. So you have to know there are three types of output that you can expect from any sensor. One is analog output, the second is digital output, and the third possibility is EWM or pulse width modulation output. So let's briefly see what each of this mean. Analog signal means it is a continuously varying value and digital signal or digital output is a signal that is being used to represent data as a sequence of discrete value. PWM is a series of square waves. In other words, I would say PWM is a way of digitally encoding analog signal values.